Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. Today is Thursday, October 13th. Feels like October 13th is a good spooky date. Uh, accordingly, I believe I've not shown for those of you on video, I'm wearing some new earrings. These are skeletons, very long dangly silver skeletons that are completely articulated, very detailed. In fact, let me take one off. Oh, dang it. No, I just lost a little, little scoogey thing that holds it on. Oh, well, I'll put it up here for you to see for those of you on video. That does great. Is there a word for those? It's like hook earrings, but then they give you the little rubbery things to put on so they don't catch in your very long hair and fall out. There's a bunch of leaves down here too. There's no way I'm going to find that. Maybe I have some others somewhere. Anyway. So uh, let's see. I'm headed to Ryder coffee this morning things are going well in my world. Uh, I've passed midpoint on the novella. I was looking up to see so I could tell you all where I'm at word count wise. And even though I haven't done as well as I thought I wanted to this week, I'm somehow miraculously at 13,000 words. It feels like a big jump. Tuesday was a 3k day. So I was very happy to get that. Um, today or yesterday what I got 2k but it was still good stuff. It's interesting things are coming out in this novella. Things I didn't know know needed to happen. So oh look my poor plants are a little bit wilted. That's not a good look for the podcast is it? I'll have to um get them watered. I didn't realize that they after all those days and days of rain. But now it's been uh, the glorious, perfect autumn with the blue, blue sky and the golden sunlight. And the, you could see behind me the, the grape leaves are golden. We're really starting to get the color now. And it's um, just riveting how beautiful it is. Um, so let's see. I did promise and I'm going to double check that I actually have notes. So an exciting thing. I think it's exciting. So as part of oh yeah okay these are good things to talk about. Jay in the tree behind me. So on Tuesday I talked about this blog post by this debut author and it feels like we have one of these periodically with this someone who gets for their debut a very good um and I'm not using the publishers weekly nomenclature for those of you who know that but you know who gets a great advance for their first book and somehow thinks that they've made it and I know it's the dream and I I really don't mean to to be snide about it. But at the same time, I kind of want to slap people upside the head because first of all, if you're going to go into a profession, if you decide I want to be a writer, I want to make my living as a writer, then why don't you find out everything about how that business works? And I realize this is not the artist's way TM. Uh, that there is this idea that you should be able to just sort of dreamily artistically creatively drift along and other people will handle the business for you. And well that leads to you writing a disappointed blog post years later about how all these things you didn't know about how the publishing business worked. Um, it's not like it's hard to find out. There are podcasts like mine. There are podcasts who are much more organized than mine that give you information. There are books, there are writing communities, there are ways to find these things out. So to, to be organized about this, the good news is, um, 
bestie Grace Straven and I had a, a fairly long conversation about this chat or about this blog post. We chatted about the blog post and we were just talking about how many authors seem to go into this not knowing about the business end not knowing how much admin and business consumes our time. And so we are going to do a very special after school episode. Uh, if all goes well, Grace is going to join me on Saturday morning and we are going to do a long podcast where we talk about business and what we have to do business wise in order to be authors. And we're going to address both traditional publishing side and self publishing side. And we're going to talk as long as we need to. And I'm going to put this up and it's going to be the, I don't know. I would love it if this is the, um, for all those debut authors, <laughs> please watch this podcast. Hopefully we'll, um, stay on topic and talk about interesting things, but I'm, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be useful. So anyway, one of the things that, um, grace pointed out and let's see if I can find it because that's in this post and I am trying to file up the serial numbers to some extent because it's not just this gal. There are other people. Um, so let's see. Okay. She says this, um, that she had been operating under the expectation that publishing I'm trying to paraphrase so you won't be able to exactly Google. You could probably figure this out anyway. Who am I kidding? You all are sleuthy um, that she'd been operating under the expectation that publishing works like any other industry. And, and we could argue this point right there, but she says the better you get as a writer, um, the more you get paid i.e. the bigger advance. So when she got her advance for her next book deal and it was a quarter of the first one, she had a rude awakening and there were no foreign rights deals. So let's, let's address these things in order. Um, (laughs) I don't know if there's any industry really truly where as you get better at it, you get paid more. Not that you are guaranteed. I mean, certainly other professions, other careers, have a more distinct career ladder. But I remember having this conversation back when I worked in environmental consulting and I was very solidly middle management in environmental consulting. I had a team that worked under me. I had a series of bosses above me. And whenever we would do some kind of strategic figuring out of something or another, we would talk about career ladders. We would talk about, is there a clear career path for people? You know, you start as you know, the, the cliche, right? You start in the mail room and work your way up. It's a cliche for a reason, right? We have this idea, particularly in American culture that you get your entry level job. As you get better at it, you work your way up and we could bring in someone who's like, it would be interesting to bring an actual business consultant in to talk about how often does this really happen? I suspect, and I'm not very good at recognizing white privilege because I'm steeped in it. Right. But I suspect that's a very white privilege attitude, right? It's kind of the, um, you know, the, the classic, you start in the mail room and you end up with the corner office and you retire with the, the gold watch after 60 years, which is a model that existed for a very, very brief time in American culture and yet persists in our mentality. And I remember seeing stuff about this 20, 30 years ago about how like generation X, my generation could not expect that baby boomer model of, um, corporate loyalty from both sides, uh, that we were likely to have many different jobs throughout our lifetimes. And sure enough, I have, um, is it true that the better you get at your job, the more you get paid? I don't, I don't think so. I think it, in many instances, the longer you're in your job, 
the more you get paid as long as you're doing an adequate performance. But certainly um, having worked in several governmental sectors there are many many people who advanced through sheer inertia. They weren't good at their job. In fact they got worse at their job because they didn't care and they felt like they didn't have to try anymore. So I mean that's a whole rabbit hole that I like shown a flashlight down but we are not going to go down. Um, and then do you get paid more if you're a better writer and and you, those of you who are longtime listeners know that I have gone over and over and over this thing that we have this idea that if you write a good enough book that if a book is good and I'm putting that in air quotes that it will rise to the top that it's excellence will be recognized and and it's simply not true. There are many many good books that are never recognized that are never very successful. Uh, if you know go look at the Amazon reviews just the number of reviews for some books that are your very favorite books that are not the ones that you see being cited all the time you know that are not um, twilight that are not a court of thorns and roses. Go and look at something that's like a treasured book that you love that you don't that if you can figure one that's like and you know it's amazing to me that I will look sometimes at books that I love and they have like 150 reviews 150 ratings. Um, it's not true that excellence equals popularity never has been never will be. I had to pause to look up this line of poetry which I've um, since we're doing poetry on here lately right. So I learned this one from watching Bull Durham because Bull Durham is the source of all wonderfulness. But this line is from Thomas Gray elegy written in a ch- country churchyard. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Isn't that lovely? We'll do it one more time. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. So there's a big space between being a phenom like Harry Potter or being the flower that blooms in the desert and is never seen. But if you are going into the writing business thinking that the better a writer you become the more money you will make then no <laughs> you, you will be disappointed and and it's just the case uh, and and you would know this you know speaking of ways that you find out these things you would know this by listening to career authors talk about their careers and maybe that's why uh, and, and Grace and I we have very friendly arguments we enjoy arguing with each other because she said well I understand why debut authors think that they're going to get this whole parade and she said you know that the, you're going to get the multi city book tour and all of this kind of thing and she was talking about how she worked in a bookstore for like five years and she learned how that's not the case and I said you know. I never ever ever expected that. I always knew it was going to be a long game and that <laughs> I, I never had these strange expectations that that I feel like many debut authors have and I can't recall what her snarky reply to that was but I think some of the reason that I never had these expectations is that I spent a lot of time reading writers biographies and listening to writers talk at conferences. You know if I can go anytime I can go to an interview with an author or a chat where they talk about their career path or if I have the opportunity to ask them one of my favorite questions to ask at readings and so forth is when was there what has there ever been a time that you have had to reinvent yourself as a writer. 
because and the answer is always yes and usually accompanied by a <gasps> heavy sign and eye roll and it's fascinating to hear people talk about that because you learn about these careers up and downs ups and downs and I, I kind of lost my train of thought there but I'm, I'm sort of thinking about all of these stories I've heard over time and so this is one way that you learn what what the business is about and and how it actually goes um which is a, I suppose part of why I do this podcast not only to please my mother but because it does I feel like give this daily insight into the ups and downs when things happen when things don't happen when things go well when they don't go well but the thing is if you are going to I I lost my train of thought hold on okay I got it back uh because I was talking about how there's this huge span oh talking to authors that's it talking to authors asking about reinventing themselves the other interesting thing to ask authors is which book of their own do they really love that is not as popular as the others or you can just ask them flat out which which book is the favorite of their own sometimes you all know I don't like talking about having a favorite thing but very often there is a book that we are enormously fond of that for some reason never quite resonated with the reader in fact many authors have will <laughs> the book of their own that they love the most for whatever reason um, is often their least popular book why. I don't know maybe too much of themselves in it maybe not enough of pleasing the reader like we I was talking about the other day Ple- too much pleasing your own self and not pleasing the reader I don't know does it matter I suppose you could try to analyze it but yeah there are books that we um, of our own that we adore for certain reasons and and they don't quite connect with readers and then there are books that we I don't want to say toss off I really hate that when people say churn out or something like that sometimes there's a book that just writes really easily and (coughs) doesn't feel like it requires a whole lot of us and then it does incredibly well why we don't know um is it important to improve as a writer absolutely I think it's one of the best things any writer can do is continue to improve to grow your chops to improve your craft um, improve your ability to get that image that swirly image into words all of these things are really important but to equate that with monetization is a mistake it's a capitalist mistake. I have a friend who's like a big investment person hedge fund person uh, who was complaining about that capitalists are portrayed badly in movies and it was an interesting conversation but it's you, you all know that I don't really like that things are so monetized in our society and money's a, a useful thing you know it pays the mortgage and it enables us to to have a grape arbor and to enjoy our lives so that we are not scrabbling at the bottom of the pyramid of needs uh, that we are able to self actualize for those of you who have heard me talk about that but the relentless pursuit of money and in the Bible it's always important to remember that the, the line is it's not money is the root of all evil it's the love of money that is the root of all evil when you love money more than anything else it's a problem if you are doing what you love in order to earn money to keep doing what you love you know that's a great thing but but don't equate the love with money 
you know, just because you're better at a thing, just because you love a thing doesn't mean that it's connected to an equivalent amount of money. All right. Tomorrow I really will talk about uh series and how those work um things that you readers might want to tap out. And I, I know I, I'm always interested that you readers enjoy listening to some of this stuff but like what makes a series work? What makes us what what guarantees sell through not guarantees what assists sell through on a series. All right on that note I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to writer coffee hope you all have a lovely Thursday and I will talk to you tomorrow. You all take care. Bye bye.